And welcome to our presentation today on the peer tutoring program that we do here at the ELC at the University of Macau. Um, as you know, I'm pretty passionate about trying to bridge the gap between university teachers and secondary school teachers. I'm also very passionate about trying to get students involved in more exploratory practice and to have opportunities to do uh, public speaking, such as at a large conference like this, and to help develop themselves, since these are pre-service teachers, they'll help to develop themselves, of course, as teachers, the more experience that they can get speaking in front of a group of people. So I'm really proud that I have uh, six of my peer tutors here today, and also one of my senior instructors at the English Language Center, who has supported the peer tutoring program from the beginning. So I'm going to just give them a minute to introduce themselves, and then we'll get started. Hi everyone, I'm Beth Neely and I teach English here. Um, I teach uh, lower intermediate and intermediate students. Um, I ha I'm Henry, I'm the uh, English ed educational major student, year three students. Hi, I'm Rhonda. Hi, I'm Emma and we are all classmates and we are major in English education in year three. Hello, I'm Mandy. I'm Ginny. And I'm Emily. Okay, so welcome. Let me give you a little bit of uh, information. Uh, so today you're going to hear a little bit about the theory behind the classroom from me. Beth is going to share some of her experiences as the mentor teacher who takes care of the peer tutors. And then uh, we have just a little bit of feedback from the students uh, who are in Beth's class or in other ELC classes. And then of course from the peer tutors themselves. So, what is peer tutoring? Uh, this is a course that we call Introduction to English Language Teaching. And it is an elective course that we offer. So, in this course, students get the theory behind English language teaching. Of course, they're also English education majors, so they get other theory courses as well. So, this is one just among many of their teacher preparation courses. But what's special about this class is that they also get a practicum part for the same three credits. Um, so we meet for 90 minutes twice a week in the theory class, and then they put in another 90 minutes of their own time into going into the ELC classes and working as assistants to the senior instructor like Beth, who oversee the class. Um, so they're working simultaneously in the ELC, and generally, they're in the lower proficiency levels. We refer to them as pre-GE courses here, level zero and level one. So this program started about three years ago. Uh, it's gaining more popularity. Last semester, there were only seven students, but this semester, there are 12. So as the students have a good experience, they're going back and they're telling their friends. And so the following semester, we get more students who are interested. I think what's great about the program is that not only does it give them a practical teaching experience, but of course it also helps our level zero and level uh, one students because one teacher is often not enough. They need more help and more practice. So it's nice to have another helping hand in the classroom who can do this. Okay, Beth? All right, so now I'm going to give you a little bit of my perspective as a mentor teacher. And this is from the past semester's experience, but also from being in this program for the past three years. So my role as a mentor teacher is first as a model. And that's really a model, not just in the classroom as a teacher, but it's also before. It's also modeling the lesson planning process. And it's also after, when I reflect on my own teaching practices and I share that with the peer tutor as well. My role is also as a teacher in a very practical sense because I do offer feedback to the peer tutors regarding their demonstrations that they do in the classroom, um, you know, giving suggestions for improvement. And I do give some evaluation for them, which does count toward their final grade in the course. So we spent many hours, uh, my peer tutors and I, in my office um, just kind of talking things over before the lesson and after the lesson. For me, a peer tutor has three basic roles. And the first one 
when they first come into my classroom, they are an observer in the classroom. And that's really very valuable because they're another set of eyes and ears. And during, you know, during group activities, this is especially important because I cannot be in every group at once and they, they can just give me the observations of what they're seeing. It's also important for those especially quiet students who may be less willing to open up to me, but they're more willing to open up to a peer tutor who was an ELC student not so long ago. And they do assist me as a next step, um, which would be to maybe model exercises to give instructions and to make sure students are understanding the instructions. They also can give me feedback on group dynamics when they, when they see students working in a partner, partnership or in a small group about which personalities complement each other. And that was especially valuable for me, um, just not knowing the local language, so they can see kind of what the, um, maybe the, if there's a, going off on a tangent, what that's about, why the students are doing that. And um, so that's very helpful to me. And then a peer tutor is also a teacher in the classroom. Uh, my peer tutors did two demonstrations in the class and they were warm-up activities. This gives them a little bit of a taste of what it's like to be in front of a group of students. They also gave me suggestions. Uh, like I said, they were ELC students not so long ago. They remember what it's like to be sitting in the classroom and doing these activities. So they could give me suggestions on what topics might be more interesting to the students. Um, also on uh, suggestions on ways that I could scaffold activities so it might uh, make a more logical progression for the students. There's just a few challenges, more rewards. One of the challenges that we all have is time. And it does take some extra time to do a little bit of extra preparation beforehand and share, you know, kind of share what you're, you're doing with the, the peer tutors. And then reflecting afterwards does take some extra time. But the reward is that you are a more reflective teacher. And in the busyness of teaching, it's good to kind of slow down and to get back to the nuts and bolts of teaching. When you have to explain why you're doing what you're doing to somebody who's not quite a teacher yet, it does make you much more reflective. Another challenge that you might have is just your level of comfort with having an observer in your classroom. My class meets for four days a week, and the peer tutors would come in two days a week. So um, it did take a little bit of adjustment for me and for the students to have um, some extra people coming into the classroom twice a week. But the upside to that is that the students adjust very quickly. Some good relationships are formed between the peer tutors and the classroom students and between myself and the peer tutors. So you can see this was our last day of class and they wanted um, Jenny to be a part of the, the class photo. So overall there are some challenges but it's a very rewarding experience for, for the students, for the peer tutor and I felt for myself as well. Okay. Um, the purpose of today's talk really isn't to present any data, although we have collected some data from students and we're trying to get feedback on the overall improvement of the peer tutoring program over three years. But I'll just share some brief um, quotes that some students said in the 2014 survey. Uh, students in the class said that they enjoyed help from the peer tutor, that the peer tutor was not only a teacher but was also a friend since it was someone very close in age to them. And they were really excited at the end of the semester to say that they'd like to meet their peer tutor again in another similar type of situation. So if you're interested in data uh, about the peer tutor program, there's a couple of places that have already been published uh, I can tell you about. And hopefully we're going to do some paper together ourselves so that it will be more from the peer tutor's perspective. So I think we have a little video that we're going to show you guys about their experience. Just tap, yes, just tap here. So, okay. Oh, where'd it go? Yes, yes just tap, come here. Just tap once. Yes. Oh, there's no... Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't put in the sound. Okay. I think that's over there. 
Sorry, I forgot about the video. Let's make sure we have some sound here. Okay, let's try. So each of them get an opportunity to reflect on some of their peer tutor experiences. So question number one. Okay, why did you take this course? Uh, for me, I took this course because it provides us with many practical teaching skills, and we have chance to be a peer tutor in an ELC class. Uh, it was good experience for us to know the procedures of overseeing an Angus class and we have several opportunities to teach activities or lessons in a real class. And Harry, how about you? Um, I never tried this kind of actual teaching before I took this course. I wanted something different uh, besides theoretical courses. I thought that taking this course was a good chance for me uh, to visualize the entire teaching process and to practice more, and more importantly, to make sure teaching is suitable for me or not. Great. Thank you guys for sharing. So, tell me a little bit more. What did you do in your ELC classes with teachers like Beth? For most of the time, I was an active participant. I was also a good member and a facilitator. In addition, I also held three activities, three mini lectures, including one one-up activity, one writing lesson, and one vocabulary lesson. For my first time uh, for teaching in the ELC class, I was extremely nervous. I forgot my teaching objectives, I forgot the students' names. What I only had in mind is to finish the lecture as soon as possible. That was a <laughs> failure experience. As time passed by, I could m remember all the students' names. I could finish my last lecture with confidence. The students were, were all active and enjoyed my lesson, and they can build up their vocabulary words in 20 minutes uh, by the Beast One competition. Like this, and I don't know whether you can see it's a uh, uh, vocabulary with the beast one, like the shape, and they have to uh, fill in the alphabet. Maybe what's an A? A for apple. They have to spell it and go across to another way to compete it into two big groups. How's your experience in your ELC class, Ginny? I have the same experience like Emily. I was like a facilitator. Yeah, I walk around, <laughs> help students to solve the problems. I also took the role of a teacher and I had warm-up activities. I was also an advisor or observer. I told my mentor teacher what I observed in the class and gave some advice from a student's point of view. Last but not least, I talked to the student like a friend or a peer as I am a year three student and they were freshmen. It was good to share my experience to them and also hear stories about their university life before and after class. Mandy, I know you are in a level 2 class. Do you have the same experience like me? Yes, I have taught two lessons about academic writing in my ELC class. For my first lesson, 
because it was the first time I teach English in a real class. Uh, so I, I'm, I was very nervous, just like Emily mentioned before. And <clears throat> for my second lessons, I made so much improvements that Vivian, who was my ELC mentor teacher, encouraged me to be confident and, and help me prepare materials to the lesson. As I provide a group work activity to the class, it was much better than the first lesson I taught, and students seem to be active and interactive during the lesson. Great, thank you guys so much for sharing your experiences. Jenny, I particularly liked your roles in the classroom. <laughs> that was a very creative way of introducing your different roles. Thank you. <laughs> so, my next question for all of you. What did you learn from this program, both from the theory course that you had with me, as well as the practicum course in the ELC class? Um, in the theory class, in Evelyn class, we learned the steps and procedure for teaching reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And also, we learned the skills for managing activities. Um, besides, we learned how to conduct a lesson and write a lesson plan. Um, in the course, we are required to do two micro-teaching demonstrations, so we got the opportunity to design our own lesson and write a lesson plan. And um, um, apart from this, we are e encouraged to evaluate and critique each other's lesson plans and demonstrations. Indeed, um, I learned many new ideas from my uh, class classmates' demonstration, and I got many instrumental comments from Evelyn and my peers. Um, it reminded me of the necessity of giving feedback to the students so that they could make improvement from their weakness. And in ELC class, I worked the same mentor teacher as Roy. And my mentor teacher uh, let me evaluate the students' uh, group discussion. And that was my first experience, so I could uh, give some useful comments to the student. But anyway, my mentor teacher gave me a very useful lesson. How about you, Roy? So in the ELC class, I usually sat with the students and took part in their group discussion. Um, so I can be got the opportunity to, as an observer to observe in the class. So I can learn from my mentor teacher for the uh, skills of teaching and also um, the skills for my holding classroom activities. Great. Thank you guys for sharing. So what I'm most curious about, what was your relationship with your ELC mentor teachers? and with the students who were in those ELC classes? Um, I think I maintain a good relationship with my mentor teacher. We have a short meeting before uh, 15 minutes before each lecture with my mentor teacher, Sarah, and uh, I will inform her the classroom activities that I'm going to do in class, and she will give me the advice and suggestions for improvements, and also, uh, uh, also sometimes she will ask for my opinion about the lecture. And for the students, um, um, since I'm an year three student and they're freshmen, so they usually ask me questions about university life. So it is easy for us to build up a good relationship. And I was added in their WeChat group so we can chat with each other even after classes. How about you, um, Henry? Um, my mentor teacher is that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I had meeting with her uh, before each, uh, before class each for, uh, per, per week, yeah. We usually make some reflections on the last lesson and we done some uh, exchange of new ideas, uh, new activities designed for the class. Uh, we talk about the students' weight strengths, uh, their personality, their weaknesses. Um, I think um, I, I, the students and I are, are having a good relationship. Uh, these are my, our students. Um, they invite me for a dinner party and and, <laughs> and even request me for uh, uh, to be the personal tutor of the class. Uh, at the last lesson, I received a thank you card from Beth and my students. Uh, I was really surprised and 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 it's it's great. <laughs> for me, my. My relationship with the mentor teacher is similar to Henry, but our community way is different. We use WhatsApp to contact. Whatever I find is considerable to class, I will send the materials to Miranda. She is my mentor teacher through WhatsApp. She is a flexible teacher. She always gives me lots of opinions before my lesson planning. However, I can still take any topic without taking her opinions. 
that I can learn to be a reflective teacher to pay more attention for students' need. Sometimes we, we use WhatsApp to encourage each other. Miranda always asks me to sleep earlier when she noticed my last scene, very late at night. <laughs> for the students, we really build up our trust and clear in time with time. At the beginning, the students always avoid eye contact with me and uh, seldom to talk with me. They, they are not willing to talk with me. And I put more effort to communicate with them, to guide them when they have some group discussion, to remind them when they face some difficulties with their assignments. As time passed by, the students um, change their attitude to me and they are really active and give positive response to me. And for the last day of my ELC class, the students even not want me to, to leave and ask me if I can stay longer. It was so touched for me when I noticed their face with, related me to leave. And I think 10 weeks time is really not enough for us, as I think it must be a harsh period at the beginning. Great. So I'd like to know, were there any benefits of this course to your future teaching? You're all going to be local secondary English school teachers, so how do you think this course will help you? And we are in year three now, and next year will be our last year, and we have teaching practice in a real secondary school. And although it's, it was very stressful for me to do the demonstration, but it, it offered me a lot of practice. What I'm concerned about most is I, I used to be um, not quite confident in speaking English in front of class, but uh, and it drove me crazy to to come up with a lot of creative ideas and make use of the technology in the class that I never tried before. Um, actually, in my demonstration, I had many technical problems, so I, I was quite afraid of it. Uh, but anyway, I could learn from this negative experience and try to think on my feet and to be more flexible. And I think we, we are like collectors and collecting those new ideas and experience so that this all will benefit for our teaching practice and future. Um, for me, uh, as Matt has mentioned, we have two demos in, uh, during the semester. Um, this experience helped me to visualize the steps of an English lesson as what I expected um, and prepared me for my TP. Although there might be differences between teaching in a university and a secondary school, uh, but it helps me to be able to familiar with those practical skills that I can use in the future in a real situation. I could take part in the process of discussing with my mentor teacher. Um, I can have the chance to design some part of a lesson um, together and this course helped me to realize my weaknesses also. Um, my weaknesses is somehow um, lack of creativity of designing activities for students. Um, fortunately, I adopt um, some, uh, a lot of different ways of how to make a class more interesting, attractive, and exciting in some way. Effective, I actually say. Um, uh, from observing uh, um, my mentor teacher's teaching, and also from my classmates' demonstrations. Yeah, uh, these are all very useful for us. Great. And Henry, I don't think that you lack creativity. I think you're a very creative teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Finally, I guess I would like some words of advice about the program. I continually want the program to change, to adapt, to meet the needs of the students. So what advice do you guys have for me when I'm trying to develop this program? Um, I think all of the peer tutors have to uh, require to attend four ELC classes every week for almost the whole semester, including lectures, presentations, demonstrations, assigned readings, and reflection journals, which really cause a heavy workload for us. I think if we can shorten the ELC class period from 10 weeks to 6 weeks, or we can uh, attend the ELC class once a week instead of twice a week, or we are able to be two to three times to be absent, it will be better to, uh, to, to reduce our, our pleasure, and which, which will be better for us. How about you? Do you have any suggestion, Jenny? I agree with you. And sometimes the actual activity, 
activity time just took more than what we assumed. It's frustrated, right? Yeah. Uh, I also worry that the class schedule will be delayed or disturbed because of our lack of experience. I think we really need to practice more and communicate with our mentor teacher more before we hold the activities. Besides, I noticed that different teachers will have different criteria for us. For example, I helped two activities in the ERC classes and Roy held about four. It would be fairer if we could have the same standard. Other than that, I think this program works really well. Great, thank you guys. I'll try my best to meet your needs. <laughs> so one thing that I'd like to remind everyone is that this is an elective course. And elective courses, by nature, are much harder to implement than required courses. Because it's not only up to me to offer a course. Uh, I have to have ELC teachers like Beth who are on board to having an observer, who are on board to taking on the extra workload without any benefit, no pay increase, no reduction of classes, right? And sometimes people just naturally don't like to have observers every day in the class. They feel like it's a spy or they feel like, especially because I'm the boss, right? <laughs> so they wonder, what are these peer tutors going to go back and tell the boss? So, I always feel very grateful to the teachers like Beth who volunteer to do this. They don't have to do it. And they help to make the program successful. And that's not enough either. Uh, even if there are teachers who are willing to have observers and to help peer tutors, of course we need students to actually register. Electives are very limited here at UM. They have so many required courses and required electives. So the fact that this is a true elective that they want to take, and some of them even register for the second semester, then it makes me feel really appreciative because, of course, without them, we couldn't hold the course. And remember, they're all third-year students, so they're about 20, 21 years old, and uh, they're going to be our future teachers, so someday they're going to be here at this conference, and they're going to give their own presentations, and I'm going to sit in back and cry because I'm going to be like, oh, these are my babies. Right? So this is the future of Macau. So take a good look at them because I'm so proud of them. And I hope that you really appreciate that for third year students able to come here and speak in front of you. It takes a lot of courage. And uh, yeah, just if you could remember that, I would appreciate it. So thank you so much. If you have any questions for any of us, uh, we're more than happy to take some questions before lunch. Any questions? So are there any selection criteria for the peer tutors, or is it the case that everybody who is taking the elective course will automatically become a peer tutor? That's right, yeah. Because now, like I said, last semester only seven, this semester 12, so we still haven't grown so big that we are selective. Uh, I would hope that even if we do grow that big, that we would open another section of the course. I really don't want to ever turn any way, anyone away from this kind of opportunity. Great question. Okay, well, thank you all very much for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.